Hi everyone, Mr. H here. So good to see you again. And today we're gonna talk about how to read music. It's like a secret code. Now, I think a lot of you might see that and think, whoa, that's super tricky. But you'll see when you learn how to read music, it's actually really simple. And it'll be kind of like, like you're, you're figuring out secret codes like a spy. And I'll show you how to do it. But first, happy music in our schools month. Yeah. So March is Music in Our Schools Month. This whole month, we are celebrating having music class in school and being able to sing, play, and learn all about music. So my question to you for this week is, what do you like about having music class? I know we're not in the classroom right now and I'm doing most of it through a computer, but you're still having some music class, so what do you like about it? Maybe something you can think about when we go through our lesson here. Just kind of keep it in the back of your mind. Also, March is National Reading Month. Look at that. There's a lot of things going on in March, man. March is busy. So March is also National Reading Month. During this month, many schools are going to be focusing on reading and the fun of reading books. But you know what? You can read music too. It's like learning the code and I'm gonna teach you that code. So when you read a book, everybody knows the alphabet. They know the letters A, B, C, D, all the way through Z. And they know that if we take some of them and we mix them up and we put them in different orders, they make different sounds. And then when we take those sounds and squish them together, they make different words. So when you read on a page, you know what the letters are, you know what the sounds are, you can look at a word and say the word. You are reading the book. Well, music works the same way. When you look at music on a page, you look at the notes, you know what the code is, and you know what it's telling you to do. It's telling you to play certain notes and then you play the notes. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that code right now. So when you actually look at real music, it looks like this. This is the musical staff. There are five lines and there are four spaces. The treble clef is at the beginning and music notes go on the staff. So we can see here's line one, line two, line three, line four and line five, and space one, space two, space three, and space four. And this thing over here on the left side that looks like an S or, I don't know, maybe a very fancy number six, that's called the treble clef. That's at the start of the beat. So these notes, we have a note right here that's on the second space, and we have a note up here that's on the fourth line. That's where the music goes. So when they go on the different lines and spaces, they tell us what note we're gonna play. But the trick to the code is we have to know what each one of those lines and spaces are telling us. When a note's just there, it's telling us to play a note. But how do you know what note to play? Well, each line and space has its own letter. So when you have a note that goes on a certain line and space, it tells us what note to play. So let's look at the lines first. So we have our treble clef right here. That's not gonna change. But on this bottom first line, we have E. So that's the E line. On the second line up, that's G. That's the G line. And then on the third one up, that's B. B is in boy. That's the third line. And the fourth line is D as in dog. And the top line is F as in flower. So E, G, B, D, and F is the name of the lines going from bottom to top. So lower note to higher note. Remember when we always did up for high notes, down for low notes, just like that. Now, if you look at the spaces, the first letter of the, I'm sorry, the first space is the letter F. So that's the note F. The second space is the note A. The third space is the note C. And the fourth space, the top space, is the note E. Now, it's very funny. If you look at the, all the letters put together to spell the spaces, it spells face. So F, A, C, E. From bottom to top spells face. That's how we know the code. Those lines and those spaces, whenever you put a note on them, tells us what note to play. And it works the same way with solfege. I think we've done a little bit of solfege. You guys remember your solfege? Remember when we were singing do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do? Remember all that? It's the same way here. 
we're just changing up the order a little bit. Do is all the way down here. It's the note C. It's so low, it's off the staff. They had to draw another line for it. Re is the note D. Mi is E. Fa is F. So is G. La is A. T is B. And Do is C. And it'll keep on going. Now. I had one of my music teacher friends up. Don't start the All right, right everyone. Okay. I had one of my music teacher friends read us a book. Now this one, you see the letters E, G, B, D, F. What were those? Were those the lines or the spaces? Those were the lines. Well, we now have a musical book that's called, and I'm gonna try and get this right, Egebediff, the musical act. That sounds kind of funny. Let's watch. And this is me reading Egebediff, the musical yak. Egebediff. That's his name. Egebediff. Egebediff. Have you heard of musical land? What about Rhythm River or the Eighth Note Frog Band? Today I have a friend whom I want you to know, but don't be surprised if he won't say hello. He's a yakety yak with a heart made of gold. He's one of a kind, and that's the truest truth told. That being said, my friend is quite shy. I suppose as a yak, you might wonder why. He's shy until you get to know the guy. Mm -hmm. He comes from musical land, where names are unique to musicians. These names are easy to speak. Those who don't live in this magical place, they forget this yak's name, but never his face. They struggle to say his name the right way, which makes our friend sad day after day. Oh, of course I know him. He's one of a kind. He's the nicest yak that comes to mind. I remember his face, but his name I can't place. Hmm. Now, don't be upset my friend is so shy. You will like him, I'm sure. He's a talented guy. This musical yak's name is Igabadif. I'll teach you to say it so you don't go stiff. It said Egabadif. Egabadif. This yak's name is important, just as everyone's is. So show him respect and remember what's his. Egabadif. To help you remember, I'll teach you a song. It will be easy and not very long. This song is Egabadif's very own. It is one of the sweetest I've ever known. I'm sure you have never heard Egabadif's tune, so listen closely and you'll know it soon. Ooh, we got some music. There was a yak from musical land and Egabadif was his name. Oh, E G B D F E G B D F E G B D F and Egabadif was his name. Oh. <laughs> what? You've heard that melody before? Well, that's good. Let me tell you some more. Bingo and Igabadif's friendship goes way back. Long ago, they were a pup and a young yak. Together, they composed this snappy jingle, which soon became musical land's hottest single. Bingo's song is loved as a nursery rhyme. Igabadif remains musical land's greatest of all time. Now you're a musician, so it's time you know how the great lyrics of Igabadif's song go. Join my song and sing forte strong. <laughs> there was a yak from musical land and Igabadif was his name. Oh, E G B D F E G B D F E G B D F and Igabadif was his name. Oh. All right. That was fun and truly fantastic. Look how Igabadif so enthusiastic. He is smiling from ear to ear because you sang it loud and clear. Want him to show you around musical land? Perhaps you'll see the eighth note frog band. Welcome to musical land. Yippee, you want to see? Oh, how fun this will be. This is his neighborhood, Treble Clef Heights. Remember it's Treble where Clef? you'll find him most day and nights. Here is the queen, Treble Clef, who stands on her staff up high. She sings to her subjects as they go by. Egabadif lives on these lines, you see. Uh -huh. E, G, B, D, F. 
-hmm. Look at him now, as happy as can be. You've been a guest, Igabadif's truly admired, but the sun's going down. He's getting so tired. Yawn. So let's say goodbye and allow him to rest. But first, sing his song and make it your best. Ready? Let's do Home it together. Igabadif. Here we go. Let's see. There, there was, was a, a yak from musical, musical land, and Igabadif was his name. O E G B D F E G B D F E G B D F and Igabadif was his name. That's silly. What like a it. great trip to musical land. Did you see the eighth note frog band? Yeah, this is the end. I'm so glad you came, especially now that you know Igabadif's name. Soon enough, you must visit again. I'm sure you will be singing Igabadif's song till then. The end. <laughs> uh, that was a fun little story. So we're going to skip ahead to this part right here in the book where we can see that he lives on the lines of the staff. And there's his name, E-G-B-D-F, Egibidif. Do you want to remember that? That's the name of the lines on the staff. And isn't it kind of funny that his song sounds just like Bingo? You know, the old farmer who had a dog and Bingo was his name -o. Apparently him and the dog were really good friends. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to read music just a little bit. We're going to keep on going all the way through the month of March with Music in Our Schools Month. So I hope you're ready to enjoy some more music in our schools. Till then, have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.